Is The Last of Us PS5 Remake worth $70? The short answer is it's complicated. I'm of the opinion that The Last of Us is a masterpiece. It was one of my favorite games of 2013, and it might just be one of my favorite games of all time. You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. While I love the gameplay, even more so in the remake, the real draw of The Last of Us is its story and characters. The story in part one is identical. If you are hoping for nods to The Last of Us 2, you are setting yourself up for disappointment. As Naughty Dog puts it, this is a faithful recreation of the original game. Now, if you've never played The Last of Us and you own a PS5, then I don't think you'll regret paying $70 for that experience. There's a reason why the story is exactly the same as it was nine years ago. It's because it's really f***ing good. Listen to me. If I get into trouble down there, you make every shot count. Yeah. I got this. However, and this is a big however, you can technically play The Last of Us Remastered on your PS5 right now for no extra cost if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber. It's an inferior version, but if you want to experience the story without a $70 buy-in, this is probably the way to go. The visuals won't look as sharp and the combat won't be as refined, but it's still a brilliant game. Now, what if you've already played The Last of Us? The meat of this remake are visual and performance enhancements, an impressive suite of accessibility options, and a bunch of quality of life improvements. Basically, it looks better, runs smoother, and plays tighter. Let's start with the visuals. As we've come to expect, there are a couple rendering options, fidelity and performance. Fidelity favors resolution over performance with a native 4K resolution while targeting 30 frames per second. Performance, on the other hand, has a dynamic resolution and runs at a stable 60 frames per second. I swapped between both settings during my adventure, both ran great, but I definitely lean more towards the performance setting, especially during combat. There's also an unlocked frame rate setting if you have a high refresh or variable refresh rate TV. I don't, so I can't tell you anything about it. No matter what rendering mode you choose though, the game looks astounding. I don't know if I'd say The Last of Us Part 1 looks a lot better than The Last of Us, but it's really hard going back to the original, especially the PS3 version. Everything just looks so sharp and well-defined. The characters are more expressive, and the lighting, good lord the lighting. If you're like me, you'll be spending a lot of time in the improved photo mode. Part 1 also has an overhauled weapon crafting menu. While the weapon upgrades are the same, you can now watch Joel upgrade his weapons in real time. Personally, I love this stuff and I'm happy to see it in Part 1, but it's not really a game changer though. The more noticeable change to the presentation is the improved audio and sound design. <laughs> The 3D audio support gives more weight to the journey. Joel's punches sound meatier, gunshots have a satisfying crack to them, and the dialogue sounds cleaner than ever. Yeah, I thought you were one of them too. I swapped between headphones and TV speakers during my playthroughs, and the difference is night and day. If you really want to get swept up in the world of The Last of Us, I'd play with headphones whenever possible. The game feels a lot better as well. The aiming is responsive, the character animations look and feel more fluid, and the haptic feedback in the triggers makes weapons feel a bit weightier. Some combat encounters have also been tweaked, most notably are the bloater fights. The glowing bulges on the bloater skin are gone. Like in The Last of Us Part 2, this means you don't have to be as precise when you fight them, just shoot them a lot or burn them and they'll die eventually. Unfortunately, a lot of the gameplay mechanics from The Last of Us Part 2 didn't make it into Part 1. The ability to go prone and jump are the obvious ones. It makes sense given The Last of Us's environments weren't designed with a crawling and jumping Joel in mind, but since this has been marketed as a remake, I was kinda hoping we'd see this in Part 1. The most welcome additions to Part 1 are its accessibility options and customizable difficulty. Just like in Part 2, the accessibility options are immense. If visual impairments or motion sickness has prevented you from playing the original, this remake should significantly lower the bar of entry. You can fully customize the difficulty too, ranging from how common resources are to how aggressive enemies are. As long as you don't play on permadeath or grounded mode, these settings can be changed at any time. 
The AI also feels much more reactive and dynamic, especially on harder difficulties. According to Naughty Dog, they basically lifted the AI from part two and dropped it into part one. I'm sure it was a bit more complicated than that, but you get the gist. Aggressive enemies will flank and pressure you, while passive enemies hide from view and wait for you to make a move. Combat in general feels scrappier and more unpredictable. If you let your guard down for a second, they will take advantage of it. Once you've completed the game, there are a bunch of unlockable extras that include concept art, behind the scenes videos, character skins, and gameplay modifiers like mirror mode, and my personal favorite, explosive arrows. Some of these extras were in the original and remaster, while others are spoilery, so I don't want to spend too much time on this, just know that there's a lot to unlock once you've finished the game. Part 1 also has a permadeath mode, a speedrun mode, and a full loadout new game plus, which basically lets you take everything into a new game. It's not huge, but it can be kind of fun taking a flamethrower into some of those early fights. The Last of Us Part 1 also makes it a bit easier to hunt down trophies. It tracks all the collectibles in each chapter and specific encounters can be reloaded with ease. The save system is still a bit weird though. If you load into a chapter from a completed save, it will create a new save. Once you've picked up the missing collectibles and returned to the menu, it defaults to the save that you just created and that save isn't considered complete. This means that you really need to keep track of all your completed auto saves if you plan on jumping into different chapters. So, is The Last of Us Part 1 really worth $70? Hopefully, I've given you enough information at this point to let you make your own decision, but here's my take. If you like the story, but you never cared much for the combat, maybe it's better to revisit the 2014 remaster or just wait for a sale. I'm sure eventually it will be included with PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium. What if you want to play multiplayer? Well, you're out of luck. I'm not gonna lie, I loved The Last of Us multiplayer mode, and it's a bit weird not to see factions on the main menu. Considering Naughty Dog is currently working on a new Last of Us multiplayer component, which the director says is as big as the developer's single player games, its omission shouldn't be too surprising, but it's still a little disappointing. The package does feel a bit incomplete without it, so I just hope that when The Last of Us's multiplayer component does release, fans who purchase part one will be rewarded in some way. Now, if you're a big fan of this series and you want to experience it in the best way possible, I don't think you'll be disappointed. The remake offers enough new features and extra content to make the experience feel fresh. As someone who plays these games for the combat just as much as the story, I still think it's worth $70. All these new features and quality of life adjustments make one of my favorite games in recent years even better. In fact, despite getting a review code from Sony, my physical copy should be arriving in the mail pretty soon. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and for more, stay tuned to GameSpot. Look, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about. A partner. Somebody I had to look after. And in this world, that sort of shit's good for one thing, getting you killed.